Good morning. Welcome to 7 for 7. Heavenly Father, Lord, we praise you. We magnify you, Lord. I thank you for your grace and your mercy. I ask, God, that you would speak to our hearts, giving us guidance and understanding and revelation. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Well, you know, as I was seeking the Lord, the Lord uh, encouraged my heart. And as the Lord encouraged my heart, I began to think about the season that we're in. But before I get into that, let's go to 2 Peter, the third chapter, and the 17th verse. It says, Therefore, dear friends, <coughs> since you already know this, be on your guard so that you may not be carried away by the errors of lawless men and fall from your secure positions. But grow in the grace and the knowledge. To him be glory both now and forever. Amen. You know what? This is a season and a time of grace. And we must be a people who will stay focused on the things of God. When I think about this season, this is a season where... Um, people are stressed. People are going through where if somebody is going to revert back to an old sin, if somebody is going to operate in a place of uh, depression, <clears throat> if you will, or, you know, I, you know, I heard someone say sometimes, you know, uh, what causes people to make decisions is, is the three Ds. Um, it could be debt. And a lot of times this is a season where people increase their debt. It could be death. You know, if you've had somebody die in your life, you know, it's magnified during this time of the year. Um, you know, or, or oftentimes what you see is divorce during these, this season. Um, you know, or people fighting when they should be coming together. You know, this is a season of Thanksgiving and moving us into Christmas. And people, uh, rather than embracing the love of God or finding reasons to be uh, grateful for all that God has, they get tangled up in their emotions or get tangled up in um, the, the, the rat race or the pressure to perform or the pressure to look good. When in reality is, is that we just need to Look to the Lord. And if we look to the Lord, then the Lord's love functions and flows through us. Amen. Um, I was reading this chapter, and as I was reading this chapter or this book of Second Peter, you know, the Lord began to just talk to me. You know, if people have habits and hang-ups and pain and problem, you know, this is oftentimes that they revert. But in Second Peter 2, verse 20, it helps us to see this. Let me back up to 21. And it said, it, it would have been better for them not to have known uh, the way of righteousness than to have known it and then turn their backs on the sacred commands that was passed on to them. <clears throat> of them, the Proverbs are true. A dog returns to his vomit and a soul and a soul that is washed goes back to her wallow a sow meaning a pig goes back in the wallows in the mud right don't be like a dog that returns to your vomit don't be like a pig that's all clean and has to go back and get in the mud God wants you to move from being entangled and in bond, in bondage even to the season. And when I say the season, I'm saying the season that the world creates rather than the season that God creates or, 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 or the focus in on the Lord. 
You know, so many women feel the pressure if they're going to entertain. They feel the pressure. The house has to be just right. The food has to be just right. The atmosphere has to be just right. And they put this on themselves, right? And because, you know, and you want all of these things to be excellent. You want all of these things to be good. But but if one of those things, elements, don't fall into place, they can't enjoy their, their, their day or their time. And we must come back to the place that we recognize that in all things we're to be thankful. In all things we're to put our attention on the Lord. And so I encourage you, if you will, not to be those that revert back. And sometimes you say, you know, I didn't revert back to a sinful thing, but did you revert back to a bad attitude? Did you revert back to uh, allowing the pressure to be on you? God is the God who, who blesses us. Amen. And I need you to understand that when we keep him in the forefront, when we let him be the one that we're really trying to please. In other words, yes, I want to have people in my house and I want to them to experience the hospitality of the Lord. But I don't want to treat them better than those that live in my house because too many times we will lay out a, a you know a great banquet and a great appreciation for those that don't live in the house and then we treat those that live in the house like 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 they're dogs or that we're we're constantly at them or we're at each other right and god does not want us to have that attitude god wants us to if you will to let love begin at home let hospitality begin at home and so there therefore when someone comes it's not that you put on a mask but that you can operate out of that same love, giving God the glory and giving God the praise. And I need you to understand because God is calling us, if you will. He said, but grow in grace. That's not a, com that's not a suggestion, that's a command. Grow in grace and in the knowledge of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, right? He's commanding us to grow in favor, to grow in, 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 in his grace, if you will. And when we grow in the grace, he's giving us what we need to grow in the grace. And when we grow in the grace, um, not only is he giving us what we need, but he's pouring grace on us. He's giving us grace to grow. And so as he gives us grace to grow, let's show grace to somebody else. Let's give grace to others and help them grow in grace. Well, I'll see you next time at 7 for 7. Be blessed.